When you read mainstream accounts of the Tea Party, none of them make sense. Nothing clicks until you go back to 2007, where you find the first organized resistance to not only two disastrous foreign wars, but a massive expansion in entitlements, and all this coming from the president who not only promised a humble foreign policy, but fiscal restraint. So the ground zero event of the modern Tea Party was the registering of TeaParty07.com on October 24, 2007. Twelve days later was Guy Fawkes Night and the first of the famous money bombs. It began on November 5, 2007 by supporters of Ron Paul who were young, sick of Bush's wars, his growing spy and police state, and the Patriot Act, which allows FBI agents to write their own search warrants. On November 5th, the first money bomb raised $4 million. On December 16th, the 234th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party, the second money bomb raised $6 million. The real Tea Partiers were young, didn't like Democrats or Republicans, and were backers of Ron Paul, and conservatives hated them. Glenn Beck was on CNN with an ex-Marxist portraying them as potential terrorists. On this program, we talk a lot about the foreign threats. Maybe tonight we should spend some time on the growing domestic one. Ron Paul raised over $4 million in one day. Paul's supporters called the donations, and I'm quoting, a money bomb. Fast forward about three years, I'm watching Special Report on Fox, and there's Fred Barnes claiming that the Tea Party began in February 2009 with Rick Santelli's anti-mortgage bailout rant on CNBC. Suddenly, the Tea Party morphs into a movement of conservative Republicans upset about taxes. I just sat there in amazement as Barnes rattled off this completely fabricated history, but everyone else on the panel just robotically nodded in lockstep as if it were all indisputable fact. Ron Paul was replaced by Warhawk Sarah Palin, and the anti-war movement, angry about the disasters in Iraq and Afghanistan, was now suddenly wanting to blow up and invade Iran. But the most brazen shapeshift was Glenn Beck. Here's a guy who was one day painting the real Tea Parties as terrorists, and the next day was declaring himself the head of the movement. I said five or six weeks ago that I felt it was too early for these tax Tea Parties. But the fake history is everywhere. Tea Party Patriots is one tireless disseminator among many. The Tea Party movement spontaneously formed in 2009 from the reaction of the American people to fiscally irresponsible actions of the federal government, misguided stimulus spending, bailouts, and takeovers of private industry. And the media were all too happy to play along. The wiki history shows repeated attempts to bury the real origins of the movement. What they can't erase are the newspaper articles, newscasts, and even song. And of course, Rand Paul, who's coming out to the political world, was at Tea Party 2007. Why does the establishment want to move the founding of the Tea Party from December 16th, 2007 to February 19th, 2009? Because it knows that later generations will ask what was going on in 2007 that people were upset about, who was president. But February 19th, 2009 poses big problems too. First being in February instead of December, it has no anniversary connection to the first Tea Party of 1773. Tea Party 2007 did have that connection. Second, it's only 30 days into the Obama presidency. Not enough time for any new president, Obama included, to wreck anything. But glaring contradictions like that are the earmarks of a big money or establishment takeover. The Tea Party movement spontaneously formed in 2009. Stimulus spending, bailouts, and takeovers of private industry. You have to love this. Bush gave us Ted Kennedy's No Child Left Behind, the Patriot Act, where federal agents without a judge can write and execute their own search warrants on anyone. A half trillion dollar unfunded Medicare prescription drug program, a ban on incandescent light bulbs, a $700 billion bailout of millionaires and billionaires on Wall Street, paid for with tax dollars from the middle class. And all that was okay with the new and improved Tea Party. But Obama is in office for 30 days. He proposes bailing out delinquent home buyers, and suddenly that makes the world come to an end? <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is America. These guys are pretty straightforward, and my guess is a pretty good statistical cross-section of America, the silent majority. I love that he thinks that the real America is on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. 
He hates socialism. Well, where was this guy for all of George W. Bush's pedal to the metal socialism for eight straight years before that? The Tea Party movement spontaneously formed in 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. My favorite slogan from the fake Tea Party was TEA stands for taxed enough already. It's just about taxes. Cut the top rates for the billionaire donor class, but keep the endless wars, growing domestic spy and police state, Federal Reserve bubble to bust economy, and everything will be just swell. When you study the takeover of the 2007 Libertarian Tea Party and it's being turned into its exact opposite in 14 months and three days by establishment interests, the story of the early Libertarians being erased in a similar process is not so surprising. To be clear, these big money takeovers are not conspiracy theory. Not at all. It only makes sense that as soon as the movement becomes influential, interest groups attempt to use that movement to advance their own interests. It's happened many times before and the Tea Party is no different. Professor James Buchanan won a Nobel Prize in part by showing how lobbyists and their big money interests capture agencies, legislatures, and heads of state to get what they want. Why would movements like the Tea Party be any different? 